everybody. So, um, I wanted to make a video today. I am super excited because um, I started a new job today. Um, I wasn't happy at my old job, so I started looking for something else and an opportunity came up and today was my first day at this new job and well, it wasn't really my first day. It was sort of like an orientation type of thing. But um, tomorrow will be my official first day. And I am super, super excited, um, you know, on the new job and what I'm going to be doing and everything like that. So I thought I'd make a video and... Um, I don't know. I just felt like I was in a good mood to make a video. But, um... I'm going to talk about a topic that I was actually thinking about um, for a while now, even before I started making videos in YouTube, um, and it's about um, products and product junkie. Um, and I know that a lot of us that are on a hair journey um, fall into this, I guess, category of being product junkies and you know accumulating a lot of products just because we watch a lot of videos and you know we see a lot of reviews and things like that we always want to try out new things and we end up with this overload of products that we sometimes don't use or you know sometimes we don't like in our hair and things like that so I wanted to give my I guess my point of view about product junkies and, um, you know, I, I guess just what I think about it. Um, I'm actually a lot for variety in products, period. You know, I, I love to have a variety of products to use for my hair. Now, that is not to be confused with a product junkie, okay, because um, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion. Um, a product junkie, it's someone that ends up with a whole bunch of products that they just don't use because they don't like it or, you know, it's just so much that they just never get to that particular product um, and it just ends up sitting for a long, long time until it's Ingredients are no longer active, and then, then you just have to toss them away. For me, that's a product junkie. All right. Now, as far as having a variety of products to use in your hair, I think that's something that everybody should do. Okay, just because I've explained in other videos that I have out that I think that in order for our hair to get the benefits of a lot of different ingredients that are good for your hair, you need to have that variety in products, okay? Um, you're, you're not going to get the effects that a coconut oil will give your hair um, using a castor oil, if you get what I mean. You know, you're not going to get what a castor oil can do for your hair using a coconut oil because these two oils might have different types of benefits, different types of um, reactions and, and, you know, impact on your hair. So, you need to use a variety of products in order for you, for your hair, um, to, for you to achieve the goals that you have for your hair, you know. So, I'm all for trying out new products and seeing what works and what doesn't and what does what and what doesn't do, you know, what you want it to do. Um, now, that said, um, I do believe that accumulating a whole bunch of products that you're just not using or that you particularly don't like or didn't work on your hair, um, I don't think that that's a good thing to do because that just ends up being a big waste of money and, you know, waste of product and things like that. So, I have a few tips that might help you in eliminating that. Um, it has certainly helped me in elim eliminating the, you know, the 
the collection of products that I'm not using or that don't work on my hair. So, for example, if I find a certain product that doesn't particularly work well on my hair, providing that it is not something that is really adverse, like, you know, just uh, something that is really, really bad for my hair, then I would try to find things to do to kind of alleviate the problem so that I can use up this product and not waste it. And, you know, in, therefore you won't lose your money and you will use up the product and you're not wasting product. For example, with my leave-in conditioners, the leave-in conditioners that are not as moisturizing as I would like them to be, I try to add things into them like oils or um, glycerin. You know, vegetable glycerin is a, is a wonderful, wonderful humectant for your hair. It attracts moisture to your hair. So you adding that onto your um, leave-in conditioners and, uh, you know, that would help increase its moisturizing abilities. So anything that I don't find that is particularly moisturizing for my hair, then that's what I would do. I would add on an, an oil or I will add on um, vegetable glycerin. Um, I will show you the bottle, but I ran out of it. Um, as far as shampoos are concerned, if I'm using a particular shampoo that is very stripping to my hair, um, I will kind of use it to clean my hair, like the first sudsin of my hair, I, I think that's a word, sudsin, <laughs> or you know, the first time that I put the shampoo in my hair, I would use that particular shampoo and then I will finish up with a, a moisturizing shampoo, kind of um, to balance out the stripping of the first shampoo. Or I would just focus on doing a really good pre-poo before um, shampooing it to minimize the loss of, of um, natural oils in my hair. Um, another thing I could do is just use one wash and then do a co-wash to end it up, um, to, to end the, the washing process. Um, and that way I get to use up that shampoo that is not, um, that it's stripping my hair. So there are things like, for example, um, deep conditioners. There's some deep conditioners that can sometimes leave your hair feeling kind of hard. Um, if you're protein sensitive and this particular conditioner has a lot of um, protein in it, I would, again, try to add things into that conditioner that will kind of enhance their moisturizing ability and it won't leave your hair feeling as hard as, um, as it would normally would do. You know what I mean? So, like I said, it, it, it's all a matter of you using up the product so that you're not wasting um, your money and you're not throwing, throwing out a product that you're not using. Um, uh, another thing that I wanted to mention is also um, you accumulating a lot of products and you're not knowing what does what for your hair or what actually works for your hair so that you don't repurchase this particular product you know and then you're repurchasing things that are not working for your hair so in that I try to always use my product one at a time um, for a certain amount of time so that I can see what this particular product is doing for my hair and that way I know if it really works if it doesn't because if you use up a lot of products together then you won't really know what's working for your hair what's really making your hair do what it's doing so that I really really recommend that you do for example with deep conditioners I tend to just use one particular deep conditioner for a certain amount of time even sometimes even till it's done I don't um, use another conditioner until I'm done with that one unless is a switch between moisturizing and protein if I'm you know using a protein shampoo like 
um, my hot oil treatment for me, the garlic um, from Alter Ego, it's sort of a protein treatment for my hair. Um, so this I will switch up with a moisturizing conditioner, but I won't switch that moisturizing conditioner until I'm done with it. Okay, and that way I know if that particular product actually worked for my hair or not. And then I know if I'm going to repurchase it. The same thing goes for oils, which is the one thing that we mostly tend to um, mix together. Um, you know, you want to try out your oils one at a time at some point. Like, you know, those are easier for you to not have to use them up till you're done because it's, it's pretty easy to know if an oil is moisturizing for your hair or not. Um, as far as uh, helping your hair grow and things like that, then that's something that you might want to do sort of a, you know, one oil type of thing if, if that oil's claim is that it makes your hair grow. For example, like castor oil, um, if it's it, it, that oil claims that it makes your hair grow, that it makes it thicker. So that particular oil, you might want to try it out for a couple weeks on its own so that you know if this oil really does do that for your hair in particular. Um, and you'll find that a lot of the oils that we're using may not work for your hair or may not do the things that they say they do for your hair. I'm going to be making a, a video on my oils and sort of me kind of narrowing down the oils that I found worked for my hair and the ones that didn't. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop using them, but I am going to use them up and then not repurchase the ones that have not worked for my hair as well as I would like them to. So that's it guys. I don't want to make this video any longer. I just wanted to make a video just because I had the time and I felt, you know, um, like I could make a video today. <laughs> um, and thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys um, that watch my channel, that comment on my videos. Um, I am really grateful for um, you taking the time out to do so and I appreciate you subscribing to my channel. So um, thanks a lot guys. Bye bye.